So welcome to the Ledbetter Golf Academy World Headquarters in Champions Gate, Orlando, Florida. And it's time for our brand new coaching plan, Ultimate Irons. Yes, it is. And we're going to be showing you each week exactly what to practice on the driving range, as well as helping you understand some of the complex things in golf and brushing up on your equipment, as well as taking you out on the golf course, helping you with that all important strategy. This is stage one. Let's go. So when it comes to ball striking pace, we have to really start at the setter, mm -hmm. because the setup really is the, the, I suppose the start point really is going to allow us to get this ball turf contact. And we're going to focus on just a few things that the guys can do and just have some awareness about really what's a base guideline for them that they can think of. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking about three things here. So we're talking about the weight distribution times two, and we're also talking about the ball position. So first of all, with the weight distribution, if we're thinking where it is relative to our heels and our toes, now, if we go too much onto our toes or too much onto our heels, it will throw us off balance when we're hitting golf shots. So you want to imagine that the weight is running right through the middle of the feet. So if you imagine right through the middle of the feet is a good place to be. Now, weight distribution front to back, we're talking about something that kind of blows the theory out of what it always has been. We've always been told with weight distribution that we should be 50-50 in our setup with an iron. Now, actually, the best hitters in the world with their irons are actually favoring their lead side more. So we want you to favor this lead side at least 55 percent, 55 to 60 percent of pressure on this lead leg at setup is a really good place for you to start because it really does allow you then, as you said, Andy, to get the ball first contact as much as we can. And you can see you've got a stick on the ground, Pierce. I presume this is talking about ball position. And it is. this is a question that we get asked all the time. Where should the ball position be with an eight iron, with a sand wedge, with a four iron? So let's just clear up something simple for the guys at home. Yeah, look, there are different ways of doing this, but the one way that we like is the constant ball position where the ball position is pretty much in the same place for all of the irons. So the way to do this is, as you said, Andy, we've got the alignment stick on the ground. That is perpendicular, 90 degrees to my target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the club head. I'm going to place it on the alignment stick like so, and then get it on the inside of my lead heel. Now, this is where we want you to run your ball position from relative to this front leg. So that will not move now. So if I've got a pitching wedge, I'm going to have a narrower stance. So you can see now, if this is my pitching wedge, that ball is almost in the middle of my stance relative to my feet. But then as I go to the longer clubs, so I've got a seven iron here, you'll see that's probably where it'll be for the seven iron. By the time I get out to the three iron, you'll see that I've got this golf ball a lot further away from this back leg. So relative to my feet and my body, it is now actually further forward in the stance, which kind of makes sense for a lot of golfers. But this is such a simple way. If you can know that all you've got to do is have it one club head inside, your heel like so, and then just move your trail foot depending on the iron that you're hitting, it's very simple. Yeah, I really like that. And a lot of people try, try moving their ball position about for every different club and get confused and get a lot of mixed results. This really allows you to stay consistent, keeps it simple, and you get a lot more consistent results from well, it. Well, that's the key, because if you're going to hit a lot of golf balls, which we're going to ask you to do throughout this coaching plan, you need to make sure that you're at a consistent base. If your ball position is different every week, then obviously your results are going to be uh, quite scattered and varied. OK, well, let's hit a shot then, Pierce. And then okay. what we're going to do is get into the assessment. The assessment is so key today. But just take a look at Pierce's setup here. Ball position in a decent place, forward of centre. And you can see from here a little bit of pressure on that lead leg. And that should allow him, providing he puts a good swing on it, he's still <laughs> got to swing it well. Still got to hit a good swing, Andy. There you go, and there's that divot just past the golf ball, and this is what we're going to get you to do shortly. Okay, well, the first start point, when we are looking at effectively striking the golf ball well, and you see the best players in the world take this ball followed by the turf, and we all really want to do that, but we need to really have an understanding of, of where we are. So where are you at the moment? And this is how we're going to do this, Pierce. Talk us through the assessment. OK, so what we've got is, you, you may have seen us do this before. We've got a spray uh, paint line or chalk line on the ground like so. Again, that's going perpendicular to my target. So this is going to be our reference point when we're hitting these shots. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the golf balls and we're going to lay them on top of the line. OK, so if you haven't got grass, we'll show you what we're going to do with this in a moment. So if you have to go for driving range, there's still an option for you. So I'm going to lay five golf balls on here. You can do 10, but the minimum of five. So now that we've got the golf balls on this line, what we're asking you to do is to hit shots with the objective of not hitting any grass really before this line. You're OK hitting the ball and the line together. I mean, if you can hit the ball and then after the line, then that's fantastic. But the one thing we want to do is we want to avoid getting any sort of significant divot action before that line. So that's what we're looking for 
on the grass. Now if you have, if you are practicing off grass, I would do this every single time you get on the golf course. This is so good because it really shapes how you think and shapes how you move because your focus is very external. You're focusing on hitting past the golf ball and the best players in the world would consistently hit this ground past where that line is. So if you have a towel, all you do with the towel is you just lay it on the ground, four golf balls on the ground from the towel and then move the back three out and then suddenly we want to hit this golf ball here. Now you would think, well actually, what you're on about, if I can, you know, if I can miss this, I could hit the ground here still. No, that won't happen. If you are going to hit the ground here, by the time the club gets to the towel, it will hit it. So if you are before that line, you will hit that towel. So this is still very effective practice when you're on the driving range. Yeah, so, so yeah, if you've got a mat, then this is perfect. And you can do both of these, by the way. You can do both of these. So this is the assessment, the first part of it. The next thing we need you to do is we need you to video your golf swing from the front on view. So this is really important as well because it's going to show you the shape of what you're doing with your golf swing. So once I take my setup like so, we want the camera, again, almost as though it's pointing on this chalk line here, we want the camera coming in at 90 degrees to the target line, pointing directly at my hands. So this is exactly where you need to point that camera. And we'll tell you in a moment why we are taking that shot. Okay, so let's, we've got five balls, but we've got four on there. Let's get another one on there. Get another one there, Andy. that on there for you. So this is the first step. The first step to this plan is just actually hitting five to 10 golf balls off here and actually just seeing what's going on here. So Pierce is gonna fire these away and then we're gonna assess and see how good Pierce's ball striking is. Okay, and under pressure needs now. a bit of work. Under pressure. That's a nice shot, right at the flag. A little bit of ground interaction before the line. And there we go, so there's the bad one. That's ground before. A little bit left as well. We generally see that when the club digs in and twists. Mm -hmm. There you go. Straight away able to make a re-correction on that one. Probably the best one. Yep. That's pretty nice as well. Very nice. So some good pretty shots nice. there. I mean, this is the great thing now because this is what's going to give you the awareness of what your ball striking is like and whether you need improvement and where you need improvement. So Pierce hears it one bad shot there, which was a little bit before the line, but the rest were actually pretty good here. So from here, we might often see that there's a lot of ground before the golf ball here. And if you are doing that, then you know that you need some improvement. We need to move your, what we call the low point, we'll talk about that later, a little further past the golf ball. But this is a great starting point, Piers, yeah. because it not only gives you awareness, it highlights what you're sort of maybe a little bit weak at, but it also gives you a great drill to go and practice as well, doesn't it? And this is exactly what you just said there. This is something that you should continue to do when you are training all the time. Put the line down or put the towel down. It's definitely gonna help. Definitely, so this is the first part, guys. Make sure you hit the five to 10 golf balls just to create some awareness. It's a great drill, it's gonna help. Right, this is golf lingo and we're helping you guys understand some important golf terms that can get a little bit confusing. And we're talking low point, Pierce. What does low point mean? Okay, so low point, if we think about the club head and how that travels around the body. So if we look at this here, so if we were to put an arc on this club head, we can see that the club arcs around the body back and through. Low point is the lowest point of that arc. Now, what we want to do, Andy, ideally, is have that low point actually after the golf ball. So if we look at this here, as I swing up and then come back down, I want my lowest part of the swing, so the low point, to be after the golf ball. If it is after the golf ball, it probably means we have ripped it straight onto the target. Exactly, so this means that the club head is traveling down as it strikes the golf ball before it then works back up. So important to understand, and this is what's gonna help us get this solid ball strike with the iron. So Pierce is gonna hit one now, and we're gonna see where his low point is on the track man. And that was a beautiful golf shot. And the low point there was 7.1 inches past the golf ball. So you certainly were hitting down on that one. So that is low point. All right, so it's time to get into the hips. But before that, if you are enjoying the video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to see the rest of this coaching plan after you've watched this video, make sure you click the link in the description and head over to meandmygolf.com. Okay, Pierce, let's talk about the hips. The hips play a huge role in they creating do. this nice solid strike. And we've coached for a number of years and a lot of people come to us and they're often having some issues with what the hips are doing. And this really just changed what the low point does in the golf swing and make it very difficult to produce a consistent swing. So let's talk through some of the things that we see, Yes. some of the things that we don't want to see, and then talk us through what we do want to see. Yeah, absolutely, okay. So let's start off with probably the main reason why we got you to video yourself, because we're talking about the swing fault, the sway. So the sway happens 
in the backswing, if we imagine there was a line from the outside of the ankle to the hip here, when you analyze it. So if I were to swing back now and I were to move through that line, that is what we call a sway. So let's just do that a couple more times. Notice as I move through what happens to my hip turn. Well, not a lot. I don't get a lot of hip turn as I move back through that line. Now, how easy is it for me to get my low point after the golf ball? Well, it's going to be very difficult if my hips aren't advancing towards the target enough, and you're probably going to find that you're going to be bottoming out before the golf ball. Whereas what we're after, if we have that line in again, is that when we are swinging back, that we either stay on that line or even move in from that line ever so slightly at the top of the backswing. That makes it a lot easier now for me to shift and move towards the target. So when I'm striking the golf ball now, you can see that my lead hip is forward. That means that my low point will be later. So if you have any excessive movement like this away from the target, it's going to be very difficult for you to get your hips forward when you're striking yeah, the ball. A high percentage of people watching this video will have an issue with that in the backswing. Yes. So really make sure that when you video your golf swing, look at that. If you have got a bit of a sway, we're going to show you how to correct it right now. We've got a couple of great drills, Pierce. Let's go through the first one that we they have. can do. Okay, so we've got the alignment sticks here. I'm going to give you this one because I'm going to be a little bit lazy. I'm going to ask you to help me out a little bit. I can help you. So I'm going to get the alignment stick here. I'm just going to poke it through the belt loops. Very, very simple. Now make sure when you do this that the alignment stick stays majority out on your lead side. So from there, I'll take my setup. And I'm going to ask Andy to place that alignment stick on the ground. Now he's probably approximately 45 degrees with how he's done that. So he's approximately got it at 45 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a guide. So the alignment stick here, as I swing back, I want to feel that I at least match up the one on the ground. So I want to feel that I at least match that up. So you can see as I'm doing this now, I've got a bigger hip turn and I'm not swaying. If I was to sway, I'd probably find that that alignment stick doesn't turn enough to get to this alignment stick on the ground. So this is a great visual for you to make these back swings and rehearse them and say, yeah, I'm moving those hips more. And as a result, I'm not swaying away from the top. I really love this drill because it gets the hips rotating early in the backswing and if we can start early like this then really there's no room for that sway. Now one thing to pay attention Pierce, to this and maybe something for the guys at home, what if they can't rotate very much? Of course, exactly. Is there another option? There are indeed. Like you said if there's a little bit of stiffness in this hip we can get this trail foot here and we can actually flare it out so you can point it a little bit more behind you. As soon as I do that now I can rotate that hip even more. Another way we can do this Obviously, you wouldn't have the stick on the ground for this one, so you can pull the right foot back so your target line is a little bit closed. But again, it's presetting the hips and turning them early is a lot easier in your backswing as a result. So again, you're just giving yourself room and you're opening out this right side to help you. So many benefits from doing this. Okay, Pierce, let's hit a shot then with okay. this drill, and then we're going to showcase another drill that you guys can really have a look at and see which one's going to work for you in your practice this week, because this is where the majority of the time is going to be spent on the range for you, and this is where the real work's going to be done in certainly in stage one. Okay, so I'm just going to again, a couple more rehearsals, getting that alignment stick moving early, and then I can hit the shot. And it's, it's interesting, isn't it? How many times do we get people to do this, Andy? And they hit a draw straight away. Exactly. Just like that. I'm sure you guys would want to hit a draw Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Okay, next drill for us then, Pierce. Now this is something, the next one is something that you can do either on, I mean, this is on the driving range, if you want to do it on the driving range, but certainly, practice area or on the range mat as well. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, if you're on a range mat, then you need a basket to prop this up. So we spoke about the fact, Andy, that we wanted to turn early. We spoke about the fact that we wanted to maybe move in a little bit with our hips as well. This is what's going to help you with this. So I'm going to take my setup. And then from there, I'm going to get this alignment stick. I'm just going to push it into the ground. Obviously, if you've got a basket on a range mat, that'll prop that in there. So from here now, and it's best if you're on the grass to put the ball on a tee peg when you're doing this because you don't want to be moving too much. So as I swing now, again, if I sway, I'm going to be moving into the stick. So we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is as I swing back is I'm going to feel as though my leg comes away from that stick a little bit. So again, I'm turning my hips early and I'm moving in from that stick. This is the key feeling that you need with this low body. So if you want hit shots with that in place, you can do. If you want to take it out and just still get that same feeling, then that's fine. Shall I hit a shot? Yeah, hit one, hit one with this one. Again, we'll just see exactly what we do. And like I say, Pierce tends to work in from that line but this really helps them create a good turn and create some room in the downswing as well. And again, again another beautiful little draw. A little draw, beautiful strike. We can see the ball followed by the turf. Now this is your practice this week. What we really recommend now that you actually pick one of these drills, find a drill that really works for you, that resonates, that gives you the correct feeling. Continue to actually video your golf swing and see which performs the best. But we want you to hit 40 golf balls, but not 40 golf balls rapid fire, 
take your time, do the drills, make sure you're working on creating the right feeling, maybe use a mirror if you've got a mirror on the driving range, but it is quality over quantity we want with this. And if you can do that, you're gonna to start to really improve the hips Absolutely. and you're starting then to really create the right environment that's really gonna make this ball striking so much cleaner. So there's your practice for this week. Now don't go anywhere because it's almost time to get you on the golf course. Where is the center of the golf club? Well, as you can imagine, it's the center of the face and a touch below it. But the maximum energy transfer comes dead from center. 72% of amateurs will strike it slightly low in the blade. It's just the nature when the club comes into the ground with the ball not being on a tee, you actually do hit slightly low in the blade. So on this particular model, this Sim Max, we've got a speed pocket that gives more energy transfer to the bottom part of the face. If you miss the middle of the face, then you're gonna lose energy. Unlike a wood, a metal wood, there isn't this mass back here. So the center of gravity of an iron is very close to the face, which means you don't get what's called gear effect when the ball will spin back to the middle. So if you do happen to miss the center, you're gonna lose energy. If you lose energy, you don't hit your yardages. All problems. So we've got the center of the club being the prime place to strike and anywhere slightly below on these more forgiving irons is gonna help you out. So we're now in the play section of the plan and this is what we're bringing to you each stage, things that you can do out on the golf course that are going to help your irons. We're on the beautiful 17th par 3 here at Champions Gate. Now before we get into teeing ground strategy, we've got some homework for you. Hmm. Now what we want you to do is really important, if we are looking to improve something, we want to measure it. So for the next couple of weeks we want you to actually measure how many fairways you hit and how many greens you hit in regulation. And what we mean by in regulation, a par 3 if you hit the green in one, you're on in regulation. If you hit the green in two on a par four, that's regulation. And if you hit the green in three on a par five, that's regulation as well. So we want you to record those results for the whole 18 holes. And what we're gonna see is really, what are your stats looking like? How many fairways are you hitting and how many greens are you hitting? And then we can start to see some improvements and also some areas in your game that may need a little bit more improvement, but it's a great benchmark for you to do. So that's what we want you to do for the next two weeks. Piss, team ground, mm. par three. This is so important. Just there's a few things that we need to think about to get right that they can do this week and, and practice that can really make a difference to hitting the green, can't they? Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, the first one is going to sound really strange is that actually the level of the ground. Now, here at Champions Gate, all the tees are flat, but some golf courses that we've played at before, obviously, Andy, the ground can be a bit uneven, so make sure that you are avoiding those uh, uneven lies, unless you want to play a draw or a fade because of the lie. And I think the other thing that we see when golfers come to the teeing ground is they go for the middle. Yep. Put the ball in the middle, that's they think, middle, straight, and that's all they're going to do. Whereas we need to use the whole environment. So you need to understand how much you've got to use as well. So you've got anywhere in between the tee markers and then two club lengths back away from that. You can even tee the golf ball up here and be standing outside of the tee markers. That is allowed. As long as the golf ball is in that rectangle, then you're absolutely fine. Then we need to think about your shot shape. So if you're someone who fades the golf ball for, for the right-handed golfer, fades it out to the right, you're much better off teeing up on the right-hand side of the tee box. So you're then hitting down almost towards the middle of the green or the left-hand side of the green, and then allowing your ball to fade back towards the middle of the green. Now, if you're a draw of the golf ball, you wanna be over here on the left-hand side. Again, it just gives you a much better view than to hit out towards the right and then let it fall back into the middle of the green. Because the last thing you'd wanna be doing, Andy, if you were on, the right hand side of the tee, with that flag on the right there playing a draw, you're probably going to hit it in the hazard. Exactly. It changes your perception of how you're looking at the hole. So aiming teeing up over here sort of you know allows you to aim a little bit more left, certainly gives you a different look at the hole and gives you a better chance of hitting the green. I think the thing to do is when you go out on the golf course, just stand in different areas on the tee and go, oh yeah, they're, they're right. So you actually can change your perception of the hole. Second thing we need to look at as well is the tee markers. Where are the tee markers pointing? It's so easy to stand on the tee and just line up with the tee markers. Now these currently are aiming slightly down the left hand side. Yep. So pay attention to that. And when you come and stand behind the golf ball, really make sure that you almost ignore the, the direction of where the tees are and focus exactly where you want to aim. These can often influence you in some way. Absolutely, absolutely. And when you're on the tee ground as well, we're on a par three, look at the flag. 
So for instance, you may, I mean, we'll talk about whether you should be going for flags or not, but ultimately in this instance here, you know, the last shot you want to be playing is a draw because of the where the flag is, unless that's your natural shape. You know, this flag here when it's on the right definitely suits more of a fade when it comes to play the shot. Okay, so what about sort of teeing the golf ball up then, uh -huh. Chris? Well, I'm just going to go here for the start. I'm not going to hit my golf ball from here, but I'm going to talk about this because this is a little bit of a bugbear of myself and yours, Andy, when people are on the teeing ground. Often we'll find that when people tee the golf ball up, they tee it up too high. Now you know where the sweet spot is now, and the sweet spot, well, I'm going to do very well to hit the sweet spot if I tee the golf ball that high, but I think we're thinking, oh, I want to make sure I get the ball in the air, so I'll tee it high. Well, you will get the golf ball in the air, in the air but what's going to happen is, you hit it very high in the face, you're going to miss the sweet spot, and as you know, you're going to lose that ball speed, and you're going to lose that distance when it comes to play the shot. Exactly. So just make sure you tee it down lower. And we've worked so hard on trying to get this downward strike on the golf yes. ball, so why tee it up? That's going to encourage an upward strike, and it's just not exactly what you're going to be used to when you're on the golf course. Okay, so definitely make sure you want to be teeing up something like that there. So obviously it's only just off the ground. So what about club selection, Pierce? Because again, something that we see, you know, when we're taking our clients and on the golf course or playing with friends, club selection is something they can consistently get wrong. Yeah. Especially when they're well protected, especially short of the green, a lot of bunkers and the water short here. Absolutely. What should we be thinking about? Well, do you know what? The one rule that we will always say to people is club up because generally we'll see people come up short. And I think a lot of golfers don't really know how far they carry the golf ball. They've hit that seven iron once that went 165 yards because it bounced and rolled 25 yards. And they think that's what they should be trying to hit on these par threes. Generally, when you hit into these par threes, the golf ball is going to stop as soon as it hits the ground. So first thing we say is definitely club up to start with. And the second thing is, figure out how far you actually hit these clubs. Now you can do this on the golf course. The easiest way is to get a gapping session. Go and find a fitter who can actually help you with this. Get on a Trackman or any other launch monitor and get those yardages. But bear in mind, as we go through this plan, those yardages are going to change because you're probably going to become more efficient with those irons. Definitely, and most amateurs definitely overestimate the yardage. And just sometimes, look, we're not gonna find the middle of that club every single time. The best players in the world don't do that. So allow for a little bit of a miss hit every now and again. It's not that, it's, you're gonna be much better off being maybe slightly at the back of the green as opposed to shortening the bunker. You, you, your scores are gonna be thankful yeah. for that. I think if you would take your stats on one round where you were just hitting the normal shots you hit and then the next round take your stats and just club up, that's the only thing that you did, you'll hit more greens. Okay, so what are you gonna do? Show me your strategy on this piece. Where are you gonna play your shot from? and talk us through it. Okay, so we, we're gonna talk more about strategy, obviously, as we go through the plan. We've gone through a lot of information here, but ultimately, there's water hazard on the right, the flag's on the right. I'm not hitting it anywhere near the right, so no. I'm going over here. Okay, <laughs> that's a taking sensible decision. There's loads of uh, space to the left of that, and look, statistically, par threes are the hardest holes on the golf course. Most pros are even a little bit over par on these pits. Absolutely, well. they are, they are indeed. So yeah, I'm gonna be going middle of the green, if I get a little bit of fade, then fantastic, but it just, it just can't go to the right. Yeah, so just that, the, the heart of the green there, you're not even going to flirt with the, uh, the flag on this one. Okay. There we go, middle of the green. Very nice. Again, working towards the middle of the green there, Pierce. No danger of going in the water mm -hmm. there. Safe, safe. Safe. Okay, that is stage one. Make sure you work on the hips and the setup and take advantage of the teeing ground. Now, if you want to take part in the rest of the plan, make sure you click the link in the description down below and head over to meandmygolf.com and have us coach you through the rest of Ultimate Irons. Thanks for watching.